Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Yolanda Hayes. I am a local realtor in the Winston-Salem area at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Today's topic, we're just gonna jump right into. This is really about relocating and just some tips. I personally relocated from another state into North Carolina and I just wanna give you some helpful tips to help it be a little more smooth transition for you. If that's something that you're interested in, make sure you keep on watching. Okay, so I relocated from the state of Ohio. I was living in Cincinnati and I decided that I wanted to leave Cincinnati and move to North Carolina. Now, North Carolina was not my first pick. I, all I knew is I wanted to leave Ohio. Um, I checked out a few other states and ended up, you know, basically landing on North Carolina and I was in Charlotte. So, what I did, so this is some helpful tips for those that are relocating to this area because I never want someone to move here and then decide this is just not the place for them. Whether it is, you know, going to Charlotte, whether it's going to Raleigh, whether it's going to Winston-Salem or anything like that, I do get a few comments on my videos <laughs> that, you know, people are having regrets on relocating here. So. You do want to make sure that you visit a few times before you just pack up and move. I visited North Carolina at least four times. Um, once I actually geared in on a city in North Carolina, I then came multiple times, got a hotel, drive around, um, definitely wanted to get an apartment first. So I do see a lot of people and I know right now the market is a little different from back when I was um, looking and when I was relocating. But what I would say is I did rent first. I wanted to learn the area before I bought, but I do see a lot of people are coming here and purchasing a home up front, not really coming here to um, look around and get familiar with the area and then they end up having regrets. Well, that's not what I want for you guys. I want you to come here, visit several times. If you must purchase a home and you just not at all want to rent. And another thing that I have notes here about is having pets. Um, I'm someone who loves, loves pets. I have a Rottweiler. I've always had um, a large vicious dog. That's what they <laughs> call it is a vicious dog. Rottweilers are not vicious. I even had pit bulls uh, growing up. So I, I don't get why a lot of the apartment complexes don't allow them, but nonetheless, they don't. And a lot of people who are relocating here um, are not realizing that the laws or the rules with certain apartment complexes. So that's another thing why people end up purchasing homes. So you have to weigh the good with the bad. For me, I know myself, I would never give up my dog <laughs> to, um, you know, go into an apartment, but a lot of people, they don't have that option. They have to, you know, rehome their dogs before they come because they can't bring them with them because the apartment complex will not allow. And then they, on the flip side of that, they also don't want to purchase immediately because they want to get kind of used to the area. So, you know, I would possibly, if anything, try to rehome temporarily rehome your pet until you decide to purchase a home. It doesn't have to be forever. You don't have to completely give your dog away. I just wanted to bring that up because that is one of my notes here about re people relocating because some of the apartment complexes, it doesn't matter what breed your dog is, the weight of the dog is also um, a part of their rules and regulations. So just wanted to bring that up. So in my notes, I have how many different areas, all the different areas that are around Winston-Salem. If you were thinking about, you know, Winston-Salem or any of these other areas, but because I am in Winston-Salem, that's what we're gonna talk about. We have all these surrounding cities around, like little suburbs around Winston-Salem, such as like, we have Pofftown, we have Walkertown, we have Clemens, we have Lexington, like all these different areas that are around Winston-Salem. You want to get to know these areas and determine if this, what area you want to live in. So renting, in my opinion, would be best, but if you can't rent because of pets or some other reason and you just absolutely want to do um, purchase a home, then I would say to visit as much as possible 
and then go ahead and determine where you want to purchase a home. The next topic I want to talk about is employment and having a job before you come down here. That is the best thing to do is to make sure you have a job. Don't do what I did, okay? I had a job that was supposed to be transferring me down. So I was working, I'm not going to say the name of the company, but I was working at a very, very large corporation and they were supposed, they did have a um, call center in Charlotte. So that's why I ended up really, really picking Charlotte because I was going to be able to transfer my job down. So um, it kept getting later and later where my date was, my move date. And um, the transfer still had not happened. Management, HR, everyone was calling down to Charlotte like, you know, what's going on? I'm supposed to be getting transferred. But I didn't want to just stay in Ohio because my transfer was not complete. I went ahead and came to Charlotte, like I said, multiple times. I ended up picking a nice area based on the crime rate rates. Um, it was a very nice area. It was Pineville, North Carolina. So it, it's a, a suburb of Charlotte. So it's right off of, you know, Charlotte, but there is it's Pineville. But a pinky toe, <laughs> a pinky toe into Charlotte. So um, I ended up picking that area because it was very le low crime and I was a single woman, no kids moving by myself, relocating all by myself, did not know anyone. So I wanted to make sure that I was gonna be getting a very nice apartment in a low crime area. So I went ahead, put my down payment on the house uh, I'm sorry, I put my down payment on the apartment as far as my deposit to hold it. And I had two months to relocate. So I went ahead and relocated without the transfer being completed. Now, I don't want to say that that was a mistake. I had enough money saved up to hold me over. So I purposely saved up plenty money to make sure that I was going to be comfortable with number one, my rent, making sure my rent was paid. Um, and just making sure I had all my utility money and everything saved up. So I had about six months of, you know, bills saved up. So, and that's definitely another tip that you should be doing when you relocate to another area is just making sure, you know, everything is not going to go according to plan. So you do want to just make sure you have that back up. So what happened to me is I went ahead and fully relocated down here. Um, my parents helped me relocate and then of course they went back to Ohio. And you know, I waited and waited and waited on this transfer and then the transfer finally happened. When the transfer finally happened, mind you, I was at this company for seven years. So transferring down, um, you know, I really felt like based on my seniority, I would not have to start pretty much at the bottom of the barrel. But when they did give me my basically offer, um, it had me working until midnight every day. So it was like a set schedule of all weekend. I think I only had two days off midweek, like a Wednesday, Thursday or a Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. And then I had to work like four to midnight. I did not feel comfortable with that. In Cincinnati at this same company, I was a nine to five. So I got off at five o'clock and ready to go hang out with friends. Me relocating to another area and I don't know anybody, I didn't feel safe, safe leaving a job and then, you know, I have, can't meet, can't meet any new people because they had me working Saturday and Sunday as well um, until midnight. So I declined the offer. I declined taking this position after I was already here. Did I regret it later? Yes, I did regret it later because I could have just went ahead and took that job and just toughed it out until I found another one just so I can have income coming in. Um, but it was too late. I ended up going ahead and joining um, a couple of different staffing services where I got some temporary jobs and those temporary jobs, one of them turned into a full-time hire on permanent job with insurance benefits. And I stayed there for many years until I got my real estate license. So it wasn't a bad thing at the end of the day. Um, because it all worked out, but please make sure that you have employment in place and in line um, when, before you come. That's gonna definitely be a plus. <laughs> 
The next thing that I want to talk about is the area of which you choose. If you are new to the area, you do want to make sure that you select housing, whether it is a actual property that you're purchasing as well as an apartment that you're in close proximity to convenience as far as restaurants, shopping, grocery stores, you want to make sure that you are within some sort of at least five to 10 minutes of getting to these places so that you are not so far away. Cause I'm right now, currently I am in Lexington, North Carolina. I relocated outside of the city and I am pretty good distance from everything. Lexington is more of a rural area where you see more, um, farm life. So you see a lot of donkeys, a lot of sheep, a lot of, um, what do we see? A lot of horses, a lot of cows, a lot of bulls. So that's what's around me now. But when I first moved, I wanted to make sure that I was convenient to the mall or convenient to um, grocery shopping, convenient to food. If, if, you know, I had to have a Chipotle or something, some type of restaurant nearby. So you definitely want to keep that in mind when you are looking for somewhere to settle down when you initially relocate. And the very last thing that I want to talk about is going to be having um, realistic views. Lately, I have been getting calls from people right here off of YouTube um, that are th thinking about relocating to the Winston-Salem area. And unfortunately, um, the things that they are saying to me are just unrealistic. When coming to Winston-Salem, I don't want people thinking that Winston-Salem market is so bad that you can just come and get whatever you want for under $300,000. That's not going to happen. I have had several, several people right here from YouTube contact me, whether it's via phone call or via email. And the things that they are saying is, is very unrealistic. So I did make a few notes here just to talk about, and I'm going to do a separate video on this one because I want to go out in the field and actually show some properties. Um, what I want to say is, when you ask for, I want a three bedroom, two full bathrooms, two car garage. Okay. We can stop right there for anything under 300,000. Okay. So under 300,000 or right around mid 300s and below. But once you start adding, I want two acres, uh, in-law suite, um, hardwood floors and just on and on and on for under $300,000. That is unrealistic. Okay, so when I express this to, you know, people who are coming or thinking about moving here to say, oh, I only have 250,000, I only have 290, but they have this long list of things that they want. Oh, I'm, I'm moving my family with me. It's not just my kids, it's also my in-laws or my parents and we need um, a basement, we need this, we need that. That is not normal. That is not the normal thing. You're not gonna get anything updated for that. If you want something that has two acres and you want all brick and you want all of this stuff, you're gonna to have to spend some money. Now, not saying that those houses don't exist. There are some that exist. However, they are so outdated and very old. So even if you choose to go that route where you wanna go ahead and say, you know, I don't care about the condition because we do hear that as well. I don't care about the condition of the home and all this stuff. Well, once they see the homes and realize that it's going to take about 60 to $80,000 to repair it and update it, you might as well go ahead and buy a house in the $400,000 range if you don't have the extra money to put into a older home. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that we're getting a lot of people relocating to this area. And some of you have unrealistic views of this area. Yes, Winston-Salem is one of the um, lower cost cities in North Carolina, but we're not that low. Okay. Our average, we just got our um, September price, uh, price, pricing or numbers, market numbers. And 
our current average is about 319 and 319 is really y'all those are coming from new construction new construction builders like dr Hort and true homes those numbers are really coming from new construction and with new construction i have a little note here and again i'm gonna do a different video a separate video um and i have the title on it the truth about the cost of living in winston-salem because i really want to get this out the way where people really think that they can come here and get you know something under two hundred thousand dollars um and don't have to but want all these other things with it so what you um get with this is number one the new construction is pre-designed you don't get to pick out um, what you want you don't get crown molding you don't get hardwood flooring you don't get a huge backyard or patio um, as far as acreage, it's usually like a half acre or less and typically way less. You're pretty close to the homes. So price range is under 400,000. So keep this in mind, homes that are under $300,000, you're not going to get the luxuries. Okay. You're just not, that's not what this particular market is in this area. And I have a longer list here. Um, just to give you guys an idea of what it costs if you want crown molding if you want hardwood floors if you want tile floors and you want acreage you're going to be paying in the mid 400 to 500 thousand dollar range and again if you do find a home that is in the price range that you can afford that's exactly what you want it's going to be a bidding war, okay? Houses are not staying on the market long that are under $300,000. And you know, they may be all brick with a basement, but they are older. They may have been built in the 1960s or 1970s, 1980s. However, they have been updated. Someone has gone in and updated the house. And when those hit the market, they are gone like that, okay? So you're then gonna be bidding higher, higher, higher you're over 300,000 normally already. So just keep that in mind. I wanted to do this quick video just to help you guys when you are thinking about relocating to the North Carolina area, what you're dealing with. All the other cities primarily around us like the Charlotte and Raleigh Durham area, Greensboro, they are pretty much higher than Winston-Salem. So if you are thinking about this area, even though I am saying they are higher and we are lower, we are not that low. Okay, I just had a friend in Raleigh purchase a town home, not a single family separate home, a town home, okay, for over $600,000, okay? So when I say they are higher, that means $500,000, $600,000 and higher. When I say we are a little high, a little lower, that doesn't mean 200,000, okay? That is about 300,000 in the mid 300,000s to $400,000 range in this area. And I just wanted to, you know, just give that realistic information because when I um, tell people about the market after they reach out to me from watching my YouTube videos, it's kind of like they get in a depression mode or they don't believe me or they completely ghost me <laughs> because I am giving them the honest truth. When you then contact another realtor, so say for instance, you don't wanna work with me because you feel like I'm being negative or I'm not being truthful or I'm just trying to push you to a $400,000 house. That is not the case, but if that's what you believe and you choose to go with another realtor, what's been happening with that is that that realtor will tell them anything that they wanna hear until they are here until you are here in the flesh ready to buy and then you realize you know what yolanda was right this this i'm not gonna get what i want and now i'm kind of stuck you get people here that has to go into extended stays and uh, um go ahead and rent an apartment because another agent lied to them just to get them hired i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna sit here and lie to anybody about what we have here on the market in order to get you to hire me you can hire whatever agent you want but here on youtube you're going to get the truth so if you are interested in working with me of course make sure you go ahead and give me a call i'm going to leave all my information down below as well as my email address my website any any kind of way you want to reach out to me 
please feel free to do so. I have people like you every day contacting me to help them relocate to this area. I really, really enjoy meeting new people. So it has definitely been grateful. I have been grateful to meet as many people relocating from all over the United States to this area. But again, for those people, I want you, you to know that Winston-Salem is a growing city. It is a growing city. So if you are looking for something $300,000 and below, you have to take the good with the bad. I am selling houses every day. I have people calling me every day. I have closings every month of people that are purchasing their first home. It may not be their dream home. They may have to go with new construction where they're a little closer to their neighbors and they only have a, you know, um, a 0.25 acres of land, but it's not their dream home. This is just their first home. So you don't have to buy your dream home first. Okay. So this is, that's the point of it. You don't have to buy your first, your dream home first. Okay. So they're getting into their homes. It may not be exactly what they want. It may not have a basement. It may not have crown molding. It may not have hardwood floors. And again, they may be close to their neighbors, but they have a home. So just keep that in mind. I don't want to discourage anyone. This is the real truth. And sometimes it's a tough pill to swallow when you have to, you know, basically purchase a home that is $400,000 or $350,000 and it's not exactly what you want. And I get that. So make sure you give me a call, subscribe to this channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.